So we became, and our senior partner, Anne Olivarius, we became involved in lobbying for legislation. Uh, and now we have seen, we've seen, uh, we've seen the criminalization of revenge pornography, but we're also the ones walking around and telling it doesn't go far enough. The definition of it is very focused on intention to cause distress. So, um, and it, focus only, it focuses only on the perpetrator, and he has to have an intention to cause distress for it to be covered by the law. Uh, so it kind of takes the definition from what he did to what he was thinking while he did it. We have also been lobbying and trying to uh, build a case for uh, a civil law. And as uh, Georgina mentioned, uh, there is lower burden of proof in, in civil law. And the protection from harassment, as an example, we have a criminal law and a civil law that go hand in hand. So you can use both. And we think that's really important not only to go after the perpetrator, and we, we see this in our clients, that yes, they want justice against the perpetrators, but more than anything, they want the abuse to end. They want the images to go offline. They want people to stop searching for it and watching it and sharing it. And that, that's where it becomes tricky. It is estimated that there are 3,000 websites hosting revenge pornography. Uh, and some of those uh, websites um, do this intentionally. In some of those crimes, they cross different jurisdictions, uh, the photos may be posted here in the UK, but the website is based in China and uh, it's operated by someone who lives in Australia and then the audience, in, audience is in the US. So it uh, can be a little hard to track. And the thing is that those websites aren't doing anything illegal. Because revenge pornography is not a criminal content in itself. Here it's criminalized to post it, but to host it and share it and so on is not criminalized. There are a few things that we have to do. We need education and public awareness campaigns, and they have to address the misogyny and racism and homophobia and transphobia and so on that's uh, prevalent in the uh, online community. Um, we need a good law, criminal and civil, and we don't have it today, and we have to be able to go after those website operators. Um, we need, um, we need like rock-solid victim support. Uh, Victims should enjoy full support from counselling to legal aid and when they speak up we listen and we help and we put the responsibility where it belongs, which is with uh, those who post it, host it, share it and those who create the demand. And then we may need some street tactics as well. We may need to go off the usual path to fight revenge pornography. We have to identify those who profit from it. Let's find them. Let's find those people who profit from it. Uh, and let them understand that we, we're not going to tolerate this. Uh, we have, to, we have to come up with ways to make their business less lucrative because the language they understand is money, so let's go after the money. And I think if we do this, I mean, I'm really optimistic. I mean, I think we can, I think, we, I think we'll get together here and maybe at the third or fifth Clear Lines Festival in a few years and look back and say, yeah, we did that. That was well done, us.